Hello, everyone. Welcome to Chat Channel. My name is Tim Hayden, and I'll be your host. Feel free to interact with us as we are live. Make comments and ask questions if you'd like. We have such an awesome show for you today. Our guests are the multi-talented Forbes March and the always lovely Esta Turbalanche. Forbes is a model and actor who has starred in many shows like Mutant X, CSI, As the World Turns, and more. He's probably best known for his roles in What I'd Like to Live as Nash Brennan and All My Children as Scott Chandler. Esta is a South African actress and producer, best known for her roles on television soap operas in both South Africa and the United States. She's best known for her role as Princess Jillian Andrasi in All My Children. Please welcome Esther and Forbes. Hi, Esther. Hi, Forbes. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. It's so wonderful to be here. Thank you. It's great to see you. As you all know, uh, Esther is a friend of the show. This is her second time being on the show, and hopefully Forbes is going to become one of our friends. This is his first time on the show. Thanks for How are you me. all doing? I'm doing great. Yeah, I'm happy. It's Friday. Always a great day. And um, yeah, it's so great to see you again. Esther, I think it's been it's about 20 Forbes. years since I saw you. Yeah, Fantastic it's, it's, to see it's, you. Great. it's really great to see you. I think uh, I think the last time I remember seeing you, we were getting ready to go to. Uh, it was it was it was like one of those daytime daytime award ceremony things. It was it was uh, it wasn't the daytime Emmys. It was another one, um, but that was that was a long time ago. It's great to see you again. Oh, you was it so. maybe the the soap in depth awards or one of those? That was it. Yeah. Yes, was, was it. it in in LA? I, I think it was in New York. Uh, I, think, I think they used to go back and forth. They did LA one year and New York the other year. Okay. Uh, the year I saw you, or I remember seeing you last, was in, uh, was in New York. I, I hadn't gone, I hadn't been to LA, I think, until, uh, until after when, uh, all my children. So, no, oh, I think it was, wow. was in LA then. Wow. Well, we got a couple of customary things to get out of the way. First, I want to wish you a happy early birthday, Forbes. I know it's coming up in a couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. It's not happening. No, oh no, wow, no, no. you're for us. Yeah, I'm 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 hitting the 5 0. Welcome oh, to the club. I'm the 5 that's, 1. That's <laughs> nice. That's a nice number. Thank you. Sure. And I'll, and I'll get nice. used to it. Tauruses are great people. I'm an Aries. <laughs> I, I'm easy to get along with. <laughs> <laughs> Very easy. Esther, I have a question for you. Um, <laughs> what is the outcome of Champ the Squirrel? I mean, you've got people invested and people that want a part two. They wanted to know how things were going. And far as if you don't know, she's got a squirrel that she, a wild squirrel that was in her backyard that she had trained to come into her house to eat. And it got hurt somehow. I'm not sure how, but, and she couldn't no, get it to a Champ, vet. That's why Champ I'm asking. Champ was actually not one of my backyard squirrels. Champ was a, whole different squirrel just a I think my backyard squirrels told champ that if he needs help this is where he needed to come oh, okay so this stranger squirrel just showed up here super injured and um I realized he's not he's really very badly injured but long story short he's doing amazing he's doing yeah. amazing but um you had the, a wild squirrel come into your house and ask for help not into my house but to the to the patio and um what? yeah but he, she does have some wild squirrels that will come in she'll leave the back door but they'll come in and eat yes that's fantastic he, that's awesome he got bit by maybe a raccoon or something but i mean he had pus coming out of his face he was very badly injured to the point that no hospital would take him. They said we'd take him to euthanize him. Um, oh. They wouldn't take him. Vets wouldn't take him. I called like 12 animal places. The vet turned him away. Nobody wanted to help him. And I was like, well, I'm not going to leave him here so you can put him down. And 
I said, <clears throat> I've helped animals in South Africa on our farm. <clears throat> uh, I love this little guy. Even just is, from seeing him, I have a bond with you. Is um, he I'm inside gonna... now? Does he stay yes. inside now? Good. Yes. He's still taking antibiotics now. So for another seven days. So, um, yeah, I'm still taking care of him. So um, my little baby, he's, he's doing great. She did the right thing. She went right to social media when she couldn't find help from the doctors, which was, uh, I would say, the best thing you could have done. Yes, he's 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 a little champ. That's why I named him champ. I was like, you're going to make it. We're going to we're going to do this. That's awesome. That's awesome. And does he yeah. does he stick around now? Huh? He's, he's in the house he's now. Healed now. He's in the house now. Yeah, he's in my cat's cage. If you let yeah. him out of the cage, does he does he take off or does he hang out? No, I can't let him out now. He's okay. staying in there. But for the first like four or five days, he. He couldn't even get up. He was just lying down. He was that right. sick. I mean, I was every day it was, you know, is he going to survive? Is he going to make it? Like, I, I didn't know if he was going to live. Right. But if, every day he he was still breathing. I would just stick my hand in and put it on his body and feel is, is, is he breathing? And he was breathing. And then in the day I would stick my hand in and just feel is he breathing because I was so afraid he's you know if he's gonna make it but yesterday he started to eat by himself i was syringe feeding him and um yesterday he started to eat by himself and drink water Yay. so yeah he's gonna make it well, i, I need to upset you with the question sorry go ahead Forbes. yeah yeah i'm doing your job man i'm just i haven't seen no. him in 20 years it's exciting. i was just gonna apologize i didn't mean to upset her that was all i was gonna say to her what kind of a farm do you have in South Africa? What's your family farm? A it was a game farm. It was a game farm. Yes. So it That's was really interesting. I'm surrounded by farms here, and the farmers are are not known to be highly compassionate to injured animals. It's neat that you've you've gone the other way. You know, these guys, yeah. if, if there's if there's you know they won't they won't hesitate to to put down an animal. They're not they're certainly not going to spend any money to uh, animals are investments, right? Animals are. <laughs> Are tools. They're they're like a car. When the car is broken down and it costs more to repair the car than the car is worth, they don't they don't dump money. Right. Into and that you was know. the thing. Also, um, taking it to the uh, animal rehab, the wild animal rehab center, that mm -hmm. was another option I had. And then I read online that that's also what they're going to do because they don't have the um, the people to take care of the of the squirrels they don't they don't have that many people to take care and and this guy needs a lot of care like every day it's cleaning the wounds twice a day cleaning wow. all the you know the stuff and feeding it with a syringe twice three times a day so it's pretty much two hours a time and it's it takes a lot of time and they don't have the money for people mm -hmm. to do that and i just didn't want to take the chance i'm like look if he's if they're going to put him down anyway, then I might as well take that chance. At least he might have a chance with me. So, Exactly. I know what so, I was growing up because I grew up, um, come from a farming family. Uh, my uh, dad had a license that like that, uh, in the fall when the hunters go out and during squirrel season and shoot squirrels, but if they saw a nest, they would call it in to the, uh, I guess, the game wardens and they would come get them. And we were licensed to bring the babies in that were and foster them till they were big enough to let let loose in the wild. Oh, so you but, raised yeah. squirrel babies? Yes. Start with oh. an eyedropper, then you went to a little bitty bottle, a little bitty bottle. That is so cute. I would love to do that. It's got a lot stricter now, you know, because you have to have a license and all of that, and the the area to do it. Right. Yeah. That's crazy, right? I mean, you don't need an, I don't think you need a license to kill squirrels, but you need a license to take care of them. You just need a hunting license. That's it. Yeah. But that hunting license covers anything deer, squirrel, you know, anything. I don't even know if you need a hunting license in New York. I'm not sure. Hmm. I'm not anyway. sure. I, I used to hunt when I was a kid because my dad, you know, I killed my one deer and he left me alone. So. 
<laughs> well, guys, uh, did I'm going to ask you all about your a little bit about your history. Uh, when did you know you wanted to to act that that was the path for you, uh, Forbes? Um, I think I think it came in uh, in 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 a couple stages. I mean, the, the the first stage was when I was offered a job. And or thought I was offered a job. I had an agent offer to represent me, and I said no. But I had no idea what the what the job entailed. Uh, I was doing door to door sales, and the rainy season hit, and it rained for about five days straight. And I was trudging around door to door trying to sell stuff in the rain. I thought, you know, that acting job doesn't sound so bad. But that's not the cool answer. Uh, they they put me into an acting class, and the first um, the first exercise was 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 this this one of the classic acting exercises, the teacher walked up to the, the wall, it was a, you know, a brick wall. And he did something, he turned around and he said, I just hit a, a pin in the, in the bricks, uh, find the pin. And it sounds so simple, um, but it, I got up and I stood in front of the wall and I, I, I remember sitting there thinking, you know, I don't know if he put a pin in the wall or not. Uh, but I can choose to believe that he did put a pin in the wall and I can look for that pin that I'm choosing to believe that he put in the, in the wall. And that's kind of acting. And I remember having this incredible sense of, of being both kind of the puppet and the puppeteer at the same moment that I was, I was uh, like the created and, and the creator simultaneously. And I remember getting this, this incredible uh, sense of satisfaction out of that. Um, and as I as I progressed, I, I enjoyed each 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 stage and development of, of the uh, of the career. Um, I really decided that I that I that I enjoyed it a lot uh, when I was I was working on a show, um, Mutant X, and I was, I was a little frustrated with with where where my career was, and someone an executive producer had 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 criticized me. And, and demanded that I become more, more proactive and, and kind of like looking for the pin. Uh, I just said, all right, you know, you asked for it. And, <laughs> and I really threw myself into it. And I, I shadowed every position on set and I spent uh, thousands of hours in the editing bay. Um, I shadowed directors, I shadowed producers. I just sat, <laughs> the guy who, who criticized me, I literally like pulled a chair into his office and sat down and went, all right, I'm gonna learn your job. So what do you mean? I, I'm going to sit right here for the next week. We're well, going to have to work. Well, when I got to work, I'll go work and then I'm coming back here. And uh, that actually um, was, was, a, was, a, was a really powerful experience for me. The, the, to get to understand more than just my role as an actor uh, really made me, made me passionate about, about the job. Well, you just brought up Mute Next, which I was going to bring up later on, but I'll go ahead. I mean, that show... I was I'm a huge I'm a huge fan. Actually, <laughs> since talk talking with you, I hadn't seen it since it originally aired. Since talking to having you on the show, today I watched the first episode. I'm gonna continue the season now because I forgot how good it is. Um thank you. Did you have I mean, I don't know if you real I know you didn't at the time, but now do you realize that that was one of the first Marvel movies since the 70s TV shows? There yeah, are I, movies. I, I, I knew nothing. Uh, I lied through my teeth. I told them, like at the audition, I told them I was a huge, you know, Marvel fan. I, I didn't know any of the characters. Uh, I told them I, I, I had martial arts experience. I, I didn't. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I was like a yellow belt in Taekwondo. And uh, I, I, I remember there's there a bunch of martial arts guys, you know, testing for the role. And a bunch of them were, were competitive. They were, they're actors, but they were, you know, Third degree black belts and you know world champion we young Cho Wang Yang I don't know whatever uh, back and forth to Korea <laughs> like, all right what, how am I going to do this how am I going to do this I just I just started bouncing around a little bit and I started doing some 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 Taekwondo -y yeah. stretches and I saw the producers point up and give a nod and I was like all right I just got to hold this for the next fifteen minutes and I'm in uh, <laughs> I, I I I really didn't know. Um, uh, but I, I, I got to, to, to appreciate that, that world the more I was in it. And then I kind of got it. And part of the neat things, of, one of the neat things about acting is you, you get introduced to so many different things, whether, whether you're actually working on the project or just auditioning. Uh, and, and they all require some research, right? So right. You, you learn about something different almost, almost every day, especially when you're not working, because then you're auditioning. 
right. we're trying to learn about a different way of life, you know, three times a day during pilot season. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a neat world. And, uh, um, and the value of superheroes, I think, has, has, has grown over the last couple of years for me, but whatever. Yeah. Oh, man. Exponentially. And so when did you know that rafting was what you wanted to do? I know you were early on. Uh, yeah, I, I, I just, I think I've always just, it was always what I wanted to do. It just, uh, since I was little, I, I, this was kind of what I wanted to do. It was kind of an easy thing for me. I wanted to do this. And there was no really a definitive moment or an exact time or it was just always okay this yeah i i i want to do this since i was very young well you I, actually started out on a soap well you, your second job was a soap opera uh egola place of gold wasn't it yes yeah so when you came over you had soap uh, opera experience yes i did yeah. Um, I mean, both of you start off similarly. I don't know if y'all realize that both of you start out outside of the U.S. Forbes, you were born over in the U.K. Esther, you were born in Africa. Forbes, you started out in Canada. Esther, you started out in Africa. And then y'all made your way here. Uh, and I just found that amazing. What was it like for you all the first time you were on camera? Oh, man. Y'all were both young. Y'all were both very young. Go on, Esther. Uh, for me, it was it was uh, normal. I think I, I it wasn't for me very strange. Um, I felt uh, it, I wasn't very nervous, or it, I yeah, I think I I felt fine about it. Because I can tell you from just doing this show, because I'm not a celebrity, I'm trying to be a celebrity, but the little camera that I've got. I really have a really hard time looking at the camera instead of looking at you guys. That's why I kind of got it set up where I can look at you all and look like I'm looking at the camera. I just, that camera just intimidates the heck out of me. Really? <laughs> oh, yes. Well, Forge you're doing like, a great job. Yeah, thank I can't you. tell that. Yeah, you're looking uh, mighty fine on the camera. Thank you. This is my 56th show in wow. less than a year. Our anniversary will be September. And oh, it's because amazing people like you all. Oh, I mean, that's well, why. Forza it was like for you the first time on camera. I mean, uh, very difficult. Uh, it took me a long, long time to get to get comfortable in the camera. Um, I think. I mean, the first time I was on camera was out in in Vancouver, uh, and I felt a lot, lot of pressure on me. I was taking. Over role, kind of like kind of like happens in daytime often where you take over a role. But I was I was essentially taking over a role on a on a, on a well liked Canadian series, and I didn't really have any training, and I didn't have any experience, and I hadn't been around uh, the entertainment community, and I, I came from an area that didn't really have any entertainment industry, uh, and I had a lot of pressure on me to succeed, and I knew that I was completely ill equipped. Um, now I can say that as, 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 uh, you know, middle-aged man looking back on, on the as boy. A I, I seasoned can, actor. As a seasoned actor. Yeah. But I'm talking about more, <laughs> more me personally, you know, I don't, you know, I, 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 I kind of tried to, to overcompensate and, 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 you know, be as confident as I could and wear sunglasses indoors and all that crap. Uh, but it was very challenging. It was a long time until until I really became comfortable. It was it was, it was uh, hundreds of hours, hundreds of hours in front of a camera before uh, I developed my own my own comfort. And even still, you know, um, I still I still get nervous before something like this. Uh, and on the on the on the occasions when I do go back to acting, it, it does take me you know probably a, an hour or so on set before I get comfortable again. And I get very nervous beforehand, uh, but you develop tricks. When, it, when when something becomes your your profession, I don't I don't I don't think it probably matters what you're doing, whether you're flying an airplane or or you know doing anything that takes some skill. Uh, you know, it takes takes some time to to 
to get good at it and get comfortable at it. I wish I'd had had this discomfort. I remember at, at um, all my children, I, my first show was in Canada, but then I took a long time off before I came back to acting. Mm -hmm. uh, and all my children was my first first job at coming back to it. And I remember just just being mortified every day, uh, having having all these these ideas of what I wanted to do and and how I I imagined the scene going and uh, what I what I wanted to to accomplish in the day. And I remember just sitting in my in my car about a block away i'd get about a block away from work so i didn't want to see anyone i didn't want anyone to see me lose right. it and about a block away i pull over and just you know i was just so so disgusted and dismayed with myself and it it, it it's it's interesting i think you know especially with acting there's, there's a weird thing where where and it might be true of a lot of things in life but if, if you try to do well trying to do well in itself is is defeating you gotta let it go, but right. you can't really let it go until you're good at it. You know, it's kind of the chicken and the egg. As you get better at it, you can, you know, give less of a shit. You know, right? You get more exactly. confident. Otherwise, you're faking the confidence. You can either fake confident, or you can just put in the time and make the mistakes and learn and get better. And then, as you get better, getting better helps you get better. You know, and you, right. you spiral upwards. And finally, you get to this point when you're, you know, giddy with excitement at the opportunity to go in and play. Uh, and then then you really get to start having some fun. Once you once you get out of your own way and, and you can you can play and have a good time and, and you become friends with the camera. I, I used to name all my cameras, uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> talk to them before. You, they're all women. You know, talk to my girls before. Uh, before before each scene and explain to them what I wanted them to see and yeah I'm really hoping that you're gonna there's this little thing I'm gonna do and I'm really hoping you're gonna catch it the crew be looking over at Forbes is doing that thing again he's, eh, actors, you know um, well if I'm not mistaken I think all my children was both of your first American on screen jobs wasn't it Esther yes it was I thought it was um, yeah well and I mean you two are. I mean, I think uh, Forbes, you took over after the wedding, but my goodness, y'all had some intense scenes together, Scott and Esther. I mean, Scott and Jillian, sorry. Um, and what you were saying on all my children, you did a part great job as Scott, but as that character, you were it seemed like you were kind of closed in. You were, you couldn't do all the things, you know. Because Scott was kind of a very somber guy. Yeah, I mean, I think part of that is 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 the the, the neat thing, you know, it it, it kind of harkens back to what I was talking about, you know, my stage three of my of my career on Mute Next. It's it's such a group effort. Uh, mm -hmm. And everybody's kind of got to be on the same page. You can't have directors trying to direct little Bo Peep while the actor and the writer have gone off and decided to 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 create, you know, Spider Man. You, you, you've you've all yeah. got to kind of have have some very specific creative ideas, or even not even specific, maybe generalized. But you you've all got to know what some kind of a sense of what it is you're creating. And sometimes there's someone in the, on that team who takes a leadership role and, and everybody kind of gets it. Sometimes everybody gets it together. Uh, as, as, as a more seasoned actor, I think I, I probably would have been able to, to take that horse by the reins and maybe do more with it. Uh, but as a young actor, I needed someone else to take, take the bull by the horns and that character kind of uh, didn't, didn't, have, didn't have that. You know, right. there wasn't anybody who right. said, oh my God. We're going to, you know, you're not going to believe the story we're going to do with Scott Chandler. Right. Yeah. This is what's going to happen. It's going to be crazy, you know. Um, oh, well, I was expecting him to make Scott, you know, have the, uh, the twin like Adam and Stewart, like his adopted father. Yeah, I mean, there were, there, were, there were a lot of opportunities like that. But, you know, again, you know, I was I was young and that, that soap operas do that. They, they grab every young actor who looks like they might have potential and throw it against the wall and see if it sticks. And well, you both would look sticks. amazingly. You both look the same. Forbes, the only thing different is you need your longer hair. That's, that's the only thing yeah. you're missing. Uh -huh. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you can tell. Yeah, we're, we're I, in a baseball I'm, hat for a reason. I wear a baseball hat a lot these days. 
<laughs> well, as I said, you can see I've lost a little too myself. So, <laughs> uh, you know, wear it with pride. I'm not, I'm not shaving it yet, but uh, thank you very much. Esther looks beautiful. Esther looks uh, beautiful. Thank you. You guys Esther, look good. Do you remember thank when y'all two first met? Say again? Do you remember when you two first met on the scene? I mean, on set? Oh, um, she probably doesn't. I, I do. Do you? I, I was going to ask you next if you did. She yeah. didn't. I don't remember our very first exact scene. I remember our first few, like, which was our very, very first scene? It was a nothing scene. We we're both like walking in on, on, on something. Uh, we we're just making an entrance together. But I remember watching you in the in the makeup room. Because before on soap operas, you spend a lot of time in the makeup and hair yeah. and all that crap before you go up to work, you know. And you don't you don't typically get much rehearsal or anything, but uh, I used to I, I I get bored very easily in in life, so I would spend a, I I just I being locked in the dressing room isn't my thing, right. uh, certainly not sober. Uh, so I would go hang out <laughs> in the dress in the makeup room just just to yeah. you know have something going on for the sixteen hours I'd have to wait before I got up on set. And uh, I remember I remember watching you go go through the go through the go through the works. Uh, oh. It was interesting because I mean. I don't want to embarrass Esther, but uh, we we worked together in a time before Me Too, uh, when, when it wasn't cool to be sober yet. I mean, Hollywood was still we were like at the last of the of the of the madness of Hollywood, and somehow Esther had this this way of of maintaining incredible. Uh, she 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 demanded a higher bar, I think, than than. Uh, than a lot of people in that community. And she she managed to do it without uh, ever losing her, her poise in any way. Right. Uh, it's, it's a rare quality. Uh, what was her name? Uh, uh, oh my God. Uh, the Dam. What was her name? <laughs> Lucci. Lucci had this quality. Uh, the, the, there are some, some great dames of Hollywood who have this quality where they just, everybody realizes that they need to, to you know, be dignified here today. Uh, she, she had that quality, um, you know. Thank you. Oh my gosh! Wow. That's... Without without in any way losing her poise or uh, or, or or feminine, you know, she was she was very right. elegant and poised uh, and incredibly strong uh, and raised the bar. I remember I remember realizing, okay, my my usual forms isn't going to work here today. I'm going to have to <laughs> going to have to play a different going to have to play a different different shtick here with this one. Well, poor Esther. I felt so. I felt myself I mean, wanting to apologize without knowing what I was apologizing for. I was just apologizing for me. You know, having Esther on the last time doing my research, I had found a reel where they uh, it was Jillian's speech. You know how she would say things the wrong way in American, and and Esther had said in the last interview that she really does have that issue, and I just felt so bad for you that people were making fun of you for that because you couldn't. And they were you couldn't help it, and they were pushing that, making it a big deal. Yes, no, I I do it all the time. I still do it. I'm I do it all the time, but it's I'm way beyond the point now where it bothers me. Now it's just like, look, I am gonna mess up. I don't even care. English is not my first language. At least I'm trying to speak it. So if if it comes out wrong and it's going to come out wrong, then sorry. And so be it. I love it as a fan. We, your fans love it. I mean, you look at Sophia Vergara, she has an accent, but she had to purposely make those uh, mistakes. And, and you could tell, whereas you, you couldn't, it was just like, so natural. Yeah, no, I, Yes, thank you. It it um I mean I I it it it's <laughs> I I it, it sometimes I have to really think what I'm going to say and like am I it's going to come out right and but now it's just let's just hope for the best it comes out right. Do what I do. I'll just say what I guess and say it's something like that you all. You know what I mean? <laughs> Yes, <laughs> that's I like, what I tell them. <laughs> yeah, I, it's something like that. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean. That's all you got to say. And don't go yeah, along with it. Like that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. <laughs> that's just my little country thing. <laughs> I like that. That works for me. 
Uh, do y'all remember any scenes together? I mean, because like I said, y'all were almost, yes, you know, the characters course. were almost married. And what, what's interesting is, for us, you did something that most people don't do, which they normally don't do the character. Once an actor leaves, they give a break. You know, like they're going off to out of town or going somewhere. You didn't have that opportunity. You just had to jump right in feet first in that row. Yeah. I mean, I noticed that when I was doing the research. I didn't realize it years ago, but now it was just like, oh my God, there was not even a break. Jake didn't even go or you know scott didn't go you know you normally they'll go out of town or something come back as a new person <laughs> yeah it was that was that was that was difficult um you know, i think i think the, the 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 young man who'd been playing that role before me he was really well loved he was he was liked by the audience he was liked by the cast uh he was he was liked by the by the by the the actors have been playing his his mother and father for I don't know how long. I mean they they they'd watch him uh, grow up from a young boy. You are talking uh, about Daniel Cosgrove, so. <laughs> well, yeah, not not Cosgrove. Uh, there was there was a one. What the heck? There was a guy. There was a guy before him. Shane McDermott. I don't know. There was there was there was there was, there was a guy who played uh, who played him as a kid. Who everybody for I don't know I remember this whole thing where where fans were coming up to me at events saying we really wanted this guy to come back I'm like I don't know what to tell you like you're you know, talking about Philip I did the role I got the role you know that, right I, I don't know the, and the, you did great I I I did what I could I did what I could the acting's acting's acting on soap operas is, is uh it's it's a lot of pressure it's it a is a lot of pressure and it's, it's it's every single day it's nonstop. Yeah. Well, Esther, I'm sorry to tell you that I am making a huge push for you right now because I so I'm don't watch General Hospital on the regular, but I so want you and Cameron back together. So I really want to see you back on General Hospital. Oh, thank you. Well, on General great. Hospital. Yeah, I would love that. Um, and actually, the funniest thing is I've been trying to get Ryan, uh, Ryan, I'm sorry, Cameron on, and I can't get in touch with him. 10 minutes before the show today, I saw on Instagram where he liked that we were doing the show today. I was like, are you kidding me? Really? Now he notices the day of an hour before he notices oh, it? <laughs> Maybe I should contact him and the two of us can do it. Please do. I, I would I'd love to have a Ryan and Jillian ever. I've had requests from subscribers to have Ryan and Jillian reunion. Yes. I really have, and I've reached out to his people, and I just don't think they're really getting it to message to him. You know, yeah. Esther's uh, representative has become a very good friend of mine. Forbes, your representative, she was right on it. I mean, and I loved, I loved that she responded so quick. Uh, Y'all have got some great people. Yeah, definitely. I don't know who I'd talk to, Forbes, but they were great, whoever it was. Well, let me ask Dandy. you where I got you. On As the World Turn or on All My Children, what was it like working with David Canary? I mean, I can't go off without asking because he is like. Oh, he was he phenomenal. Was... He is. He was just such a gentleman. He was kind. He was professional. He scared me you know, as Adam. He scared me. You know, I was like, I don't, I don't think I ever want to meet him. <laughs> but that was the character. Really? <laughs> he did a good job, to, you know, convincing me that I was scared of him. <laughs> Him and no, he was he was, <laughs> he was uh, a wonderful human being. Like he was he was uh, a really great man, really awesome. Before you worked with him really close because Stuart was your adopted dad, which was your dad basically. I mean, yeah, he, he, you and Mar was, him um, and Marion. Uh, I've I've been very fortunate in, in 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 most of my my jobs, both acting and not acting. That I always seem to find a gentleman uh, to kind of you know take me under their wing. Uh, I've always been careful to, to curate that. But he was he was the first you know. All my children was the first long running sh job that I worked on, and to have David Canary playing my father. And to have the opportunity to spend an hour per day with him at that point in my career was, uh, and my life, uh, was, was incredibly valuable. We'd, we'd spend like a half hour running lines. And then uh, at, you know, like 25 years old, uh, I had uh, a young young bride 
who was who was who was pregnant while starting a new career. I was under a lot of pressure, and he was sure. he was a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful mentor to me uh, for for a time when I really needed uh, uh, a good man to 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 help me out. Uh, wonderful gentleman, just just uh, well, it, it's the right word for him. He's a gentleman. He's he's compassionate. He's he's quiet. He listens carefully. Um, I, I I very much uh, value the time the time he gave me. Uh, great person. Great person. Well, that's uh, I need to ask you about something <clears throat> that I didn't even ask you the last time you were on. What in the world was it like for when Greenlee and uh, Jillian y'all went at it? At some some of those memorable fights ever on the show, what yes. was that like? I mean, Rebecca it was so Vood, much which is fun. Awesome. <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Yeah, it was. We had a lot of fun doing those scenes. Actually, I loved doing them. Yeah, I mean, y'all, y'all were the Alexis and Crystal, you know, from Dynasty on yes. all my children. <laughs> yes, no, it was just because uh, it's not something I would do in real life. I, I don't yeah. have that type of situations or scenarios in my real life. And um, I just really enjoyed that, going for for that. Having like yeah. a catch fight like that, it was wonderful. It was great. I mean, I know as a fan watching Thank it, you. it was great. But you, you know, you personally, you're not like uh, Jillian. <laughs> Jillian was, <laughs> I think one person, one site described it as a Sex fanatic, uh, money hungry woman. But yeah. That, when she came to town, that was her interest. But that's not who you were. I mean, that's not who Jillian became. And I think Scott and Ryan had a lot to do with that. Yes. A lot to do with that. Uh, yeah. She fell in love and she found her, you know, she found her heart and she changed. So much she came back from heaven. Yes. <laughs> she came down from heaven. Yes. Well, Forbes, I'm gonna ask you about one of your other jobs because I keep wanting to call you by this name. Um for every every time I see you, I want to call you Nash. Because I watched both shows. They were both two of my favorite shows. So, you know, of course. But what was it? Was it hard switching from Scott to Nash? Because no. Nash was just <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> Nash, Nash was Nash. What was, Nash was like my my exhale. Uh, Nash was <laughs> Nash was was kind of absurd. Uh, I didn't when I when I took that job. Uh, I I I wasn't thinking of that as being a long term job, and uh, I just thought it would be really fun to go hang out in New York for a couple months. <laughs> and work on a soap again. I, I, I'd, I'd come off of uh, All My Children, gone on to Mute Next, which was one camera as opposed to four cameras. So four right. cameras very fast. It's very much like theater. One camera is incredibly monotonous, very slow. You you might work on, you know, a half a page of dialogue you might work on for eight hours. Uh, and I just, you know, that part came up and I was like, ah, let's go bang some, you know, let's go bang some crap out. Uh, and I just, I just, I had the luxury of just having fun with uh, a crew who were incredibly, incredibly talented. And Did you not realize the family that you were getting involved with? I mean, yeah, your yeah, character was getting involved show. with. I don't think about it. <laughs> I, I just, I just, I didn't even like. I, I had this thing where I'd, I'd pick a, I'd pick, I'd pick a character. For the day, like Woody Allen, I'm gonna put Woody Allen into Nash today, and then the next day was like uh, uh, the 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 when 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 the fox is dressed like a stork and the Walt Disney animated version yes. of Robin Hood. I'm gonna do that as Nash for a day. And I just I just had fun, and uh, I know it worked. And Frank, uh, the producer, was I think he's producing Jen Austin now. He, he he was he, he's a really creative guy, and and he just let me have fun. And I just had an absolute blast for a couple of years. It was it was, well, it was such a pleasure, such an honor to, to play that. There again, you played, I mean, you worked with some of the legendary people, you know, yeah. Erica Slazak and, you know, <laughs> awesome. Robert Woods. So and, yeah. And, and Brie, I mean, Brie, she's great. 
<laughs> she was amazing. Uh, Brie, Brie's really interesting. She was an extraordinary improviser. You could throw, you could throw anything at her. Uh, the, uh, who was the other one? Uh, Kelly. Kelly Ripa was kind of like her. They both have photographic memories. Uh, so you could, you could, I could bounce. I have a very, very, very bad memory. Uh, <laughs> it sounds like me. <laughs> I, I, I just, I can't. I just, I just can't. So the question is, how, how, how am I going to work around the fact that I can't learn lines? Uh, so I, I bounce around a lot, and you can you can always see her like in the midair, like flipping pages, trying to trying to find where it's there, and then she she goes. So she but she could do it. She could do it, and that that uh, that was that wonderful. Is, that was wonderful. That among anything, a lot of things, but that's the most important thing. One of the main reasons I could not just memory. I mean, even now I've got my little list of you know notes here because. My memory is crap. <laughs> I just couldn't have done it. <laughs> the good thing on a soap opera is, you know, you you only ever work on any on new material once every, you know, three months, and then I'm the one that got to put it just, on. You just rehearse that until the next week. Then you get some new material. I'm the one that got to put it all on postcards and put it different places where I can look. It's, see un, what it's I underneath say. the seats on the sofa. <laughs> right. all, all the fern, all the pillows, all the pillows in set. You you lift them up, and there's you know stacks of scripts underneath them. I want to ask you about one more character that you portrayed and, and I find it fascinating because it was so early on um, when you went to As the World Turns, um, you, you, you played a gay man, yeah. which, you know, I'm, I, w I would like to know about because, I, well, first, let's, how was that experience as playing a gay man? And you're not the one that I've had on that's done that, Eric Nelson, which I'll talk about here in a few, but you're not the one that I've asked this to. <laughs> it, it actually wasn't my first time playing uh, a, a gay man. It was my first time playing uh, a, a gay older man who wasn't necessarily good. Uh, but I mean, it, it just really didn't make make a difference to me. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't see any difference. It was really funny. A lot of people were really concerned for my wife. I thought that was just so bizarre. <laughs> what does your wife think about that? What does my wife think about that? If there's one person in this world who shouldn't be worried, it's my wife, and she's worried. We got much bigger problems than her being yeah. worried. I mean, this is this is so bizarre. Yeah, you know, the next question on my gay. list. I mean, I'm, you know, are you are you reading my script? Because the next question was, what did your family say about it? <laughs> 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 he's acting you know i think i think you, a lot of people somehow want to think they want to think that you're going to turn gay by playing gay it's, it's right. the greatest homophobia what, do you think it was too soon gay is going to make me gay do, do, do you uh, think it was too soon you for think that I'm that, like i'm that riddled with sexual issues right. that if i think about something else that's all it's going to take for me to change teams I mean, do, do you think it was too soon in, as far as date wise, do you think it was too soon to put that kind of thing on daytime? I don't know. Because really... uh, no, I know on I the was, on the bay it was too late, uh, and I think they made. I don't know. That's interesting. Was it too soon? No, I think it was the right time. Um, it it was a big deal, and someone had to do it, and it had to be a big deal when it was done. It was going to be a big deal when it was done. And they did it. I mean, I, I, I had kind of a minor role to the to the two young men who played the 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 you know the, the gay couple. And I think they did a really right. great job. Uh, they took that on. Um, well, like yeah, I, said, I think I, I think it was I think it was the right time, and that's I think that that couple probably saved that show. It really made that show interesting for a long time. I mean, because now today there's at least one couple, if not more, like in the wrestlers. I know off top of my head, there's two different, uh, which is great. I love that they are evolving with the times because it, it needs to be. Yeah. Um, as I was going to say, uh, I watched the Bay, the series. I'm a huge fan of the Bay, the series and Eric Nelson on there. He plays one of the ma main roles. He's from 1883. He played in 1883 also, but he plays a gay man in the Bay, but you know, he's got a wife, children and everything else in, in real reality. Uh, and, I mean, and... as, as actors, it's, it's, it's our whole, you don't tend to be attracted to acting if, if, if you want, if you don't want to break rules, right? Like, mm -hmm. It's, it's kind of a chicken and an egg. This is, if, if, if you want to be the cool dude, then acting's probably not for you, you know, 
we 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 do things and this is going to initially sound it sounds wrong but we we do things that are humiliating for a profession right and at the time that was that was humiliating it's not anymore and that's kind of the point of it right, right. but at the time that was that was not socially acceptable exactly which meant i had to do it like every every <laughs> Everything in my being, I had no choice. I mean, you got to be kidding me. I can play a gay guy? That's awesome. You know, that's what this is about. Breaking breaking boundaries and, and making myself, you know, go places that I shouldn't, that I normally would restrict myself from going. That That's 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 why this was a good profession for me. Right. Esther, are you ready to return the daytime if you had the opportunity arises? <laughs> Yes, absolutely. Awesome. Forrest, would you return to daytime or would you prefer night prime time? Because I know you've had a taste of, and film, you've had a taste of all three. Uh, if, if there's, if there's, for a long time, I wanted to get away from, from, from all of it. And I did, you know, I, 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 I moved to a farm out of the city. I canceled my subscriptions. I canceled my TV. I, I, Short union card and I quit. Uh, now I would. Now you know, if someone's got a got a camera and a story, I'd I'd I'd, uh, I'd turn up. <laughs> I, miss, get I, miss, I miss the I miss the the art of act. I miss the the activity of acting very very much. We need to get on a Gregory J Martin and have him get y'all write y'all storyline in the bay. He's a great I guy. His one. first movie. He owes me. Oh uh, well, there you go. See. See, but but honestly, Forbes, you're not the only actor. I, I mean, I've had them on here, and some that I can't even get on here because they left, they're done. Right. You know, Sherry Stringfield from uh, Guiding Light, she won't do anything. Meg Ryan, you know, she started out on Ezra Returns and a big movie. She won't do interviews. She doesn't. She's done. Really? Right. Yeah. They they were like, we're done. We're getting out of it. We're out. We're gone. See ya. Wow. <laughs> uh, at which you know. I respect that because a lot of it is spending time with the family, wanting to spend time because on soaps, if especially if you work in New York and you live in California, you don't have any family time when you're trying to work. Yeah. You're talking about quitting Hollywood completely or or, or daytime? No, they've quit Hollywood, period. Hollywood completely, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the, even on IMDb, luckily Forbes uh, had a contact with for you there. Uh, but most people who are away from it, like as long as you have been, they have nothing. There's no contact information at all. You don't even know who your agent was or anything. Yeah, I reached out to Sandy recently. She's um, she's someone I've known for a long time, but uh, I didn't have an agent until uh, two months ago, uh, post COVID. Um, yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll, it, it, working as an actor is 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 uh, it's a weird head trip. It's a weird head. Yeah. Uh, it's, you know, uh, and you know, those, those, those people you, you, you named, they had, they, they were really in it for a long time. I can see why they at some point would say, you know what, I want to be alone, you know? Yeah. I, I, I would, I would love to, because it's somebody you all know, I'd love to see you all get hooked up with, um, Jacob Young. He has got, uh, him and a couple other people have got a good thing going. It's called working with working actors and they're teaching they have seminars and they teach people who pay them to teach them how to act to work with acting you know they are experienced i think they're fit he's got him amanda baker browning um there's a i, I can't think of her name from young and the restless there's a few of them that do it i think katie mclean after being on my show they were talking about on the show i think she's going to jump in there and do a couple with them uh but yeah, doing I mean, LA, west coast huh yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, well, Jacob is mostly online. Jacob is in Charleston and he does most of his online and Amanda is in Nashville. Um, I haven't, I haven't spoken to Jacob in a long time. Uh, we used to hang out a lot. I will reach out to him. Jacob's he's great. Good. He's a good friend of the show. He always likes things that I post his stuff, which, you know, most Larry is not about that. Like, mm, no, okay. We're just scrolling by, but no, he, he's very supportive. He's been on the show twice and him and Amanda, they've both been great. Uh, uh, they're very good people. I mean, everybody I've had on the show has been great people. I've only ever ran into one person. I can't say their name, but I've only ever ran into one person who was just 
not a nice person, we'll say. <laughs> Sorry to hear that. They couldn't uh, even fake it. <laughs> well, they put me, they said they're going to do the show and put me to work. I, I, they're huge. They're huge. I mean, I'll tell you off camera who it was, but, and they had me do all literally 40 hours worth of work that they had to approve before they would do it. And I did 40 hours worth of work and turned it in. And they sent me an email saying, delete my email address. Don't ever talk, contact me again, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Uh, and the only thing I want you to do is respond to this email with yes, saying that you understand. And then delete my email address. Well, I had her phone know, number and everything. I've got her phone number. I'm like, really? Really? It, it was a big day when I when I finally like qualified for the union because my wife was pregnant and I had no health insurance. So when I got all my children, that was a big deal because I got into the union. I got health insurance with a pregnant woman at home, you know, wow. Obamacare, it's a big deal. And I, I get the, uh, I get the, the booklet The you know, we're all familiar with, with when you get a new health insurer, that book that comes. And uh, it was about a hundred pages long. And the first 50 pages of it, this was four actors for the actors union. The first 50 pages of it was, was, was drug abuse and mental health issues. And then the last, like, whatever, 20 pages was like, oh, and by the way, if you break your leg, you got to get to the hospital. Go. But the, <laughs> like, most of the book was, if you're schizophrenic, call this number. If you're, you know, <laughs> if you're manic depressive, call this number. If you're addicted to cocaine, don't do cocaine, call this number and we'll help you. I mean, this is, this is crazy. So, yeah, if you come across a nut, man. You know. Well, I've talked to a couple of people about it since that worked with, which you did work with her for, you did, Nesta. Um, they were like, oh my God, she is schizophrenic. Um, she does this to everybody. She said, you're not the only person that she's done it to. She does it to everybody. It's like a game to her. I'm like, oh God, what a witch. <laughs> so, wow. But everybody else is being great. I, I mean, you all, it's like I tell people, the people, soap stars, are the kindest, most generous people ever. Uh, I mean, y'all are so gen generous with your time. You're like, okay, yeah, let's let's do your show. Where it's prime time, they're like, mm, no, mm, no. And music, you may as well forget it. You can't get any musicians on a show. Wow. Well, guys, I've had you on for about an hour. I won't keep you all. I hope. You will be back, Esther. You know you will be, Forbes. I hope you will be because I'm trying to get Melissa Archer and Bree on too. That'd be fantastic. I would yeah. love to have you three on together. If y'all want to hang out in the back uh, waiting room for just a minute, I'll be right back there with you guys. Well, sure. thank you so much. It was great to to be on your show again, and uh, so great to see you, Forbes. Really wonderful to see you again. Really great to see you, Esther. It's been too long. I hope I see you again soon. And thank yes. you. Guys. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Well, we'll be able to talk here in just a minute. Y'all be able to catch up some more as soon as I uh, wrap this up real quick. It'll take me about a minute. Okay. All right. See you in just a moment. I'd like to thank Esther and Forrest for being here today. I mean, come on. What a reunion. Really? Um, I'd like to thank the Necrotizing Fasciitis Foundation for sponsoring our show. To learn more about necrotizing fasciitis, please visit www.necfasci.org. If, uh, if you enjoyed this show, please hit the like button. That helps us out a lot. And subscribe to our channel. That also will help us out. Um, and as usual, I hope you all have a great day. And please be kind to one another. Till next time, see you. <laughs>